Welcome to Protecting Your Assets, the show about protecting people, property, and most importantly, protecting your ass. I'm your host, Lucky Luciano, and I'd like you to join me for a fast-paced and often fiery discussion about security issues with my co-host, Brian the Angry Man Claimant. Whether we're piercing the veil of security, talking your duty of care, or raving about the latest technology, we'll share our thoughts on the issues, the trends that are impacting security today and into the future. And now, let's talk about protecting your assets. Hello, and Happy New Year to our folks out in uh, Podville land. It is uh, Lucky Luciano and Brian the Angry Man Clayman from Protecting Your Assets. We are kicking the new year off with episode five, um, which I think you'll find really interesting because, quite frankly, we don't have a good agenda or a solid agenda. We're going to wing this one in terms of what we saw in 2022 and where we think we're going in 2023. So this can really go anywhere. We're not specific to a topic, but I think it'll be uh, it'll be well worth the discussion with my good friend Brian and Brian. Uh, at the time of this taping, uh, we're yet to hit the holidays, but uh, how are you doing? How are things going? Are you prepared? Excited. Yeah, I love this time of year. Just a couple of things, though, before we talk about me. A couple of points. Podville land. Is that like <laughs> Yorkville land? Like Podville land? It's ad lib. <laughs> yeah, it really is ad lib. I like how you told everyone that this is going to be a great episode because unlike the usual tight script that we use, this could be ad lib. Aren't they all ad lib? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our secret. You're not supposed to share oh, that. Okay. Yeah. No, I love this time of year. Things are good. Uh, everything is good until I think the mid, uh, mid January, second week of January, when the credit card bills start coming in. But yeah. Right now, no kidding. I am in fantasy land and uh, just having fun. Especially this year. Oh, it's great extra taxes that our government has given us on January 1st. So we're going to start uh, the new year with our new uh, component, which is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, I can quickly go through mine, or you want to do yours first? Uh, you do yours first, and then uh, I'll do mine, and we'll segue into our topic. Perfect. All right. Well, for me, the good is, uh, at this point, the final still to be played, but I... I've got to say it's not security related, but it's been a fantastic World Cup in terms of the games. It's mm. been exciting. You've seen some minor teams like Morocco in particular knock off some of the big boys in the sport. So it's really good uh, in that respect. I hope at the time of this recording that uh, Messi will finally lift that trophy and basically seal his fate as the greatest of all time, because I think he is at this point by a long shot. The bad now shifting back to... Um, security related matters i think that whole gun control legislation is developing into a disaster for the for the liberal government um, i saw what medicino uh, on the uh, the news this week trying to backpedal uh, you know taking off the the uh, the hunting issues for the hunters that you know sort of backpedaling because it's starting to blow up in their face and i hope so i really hope it does because we don't need gun control in this country we need freaking laws that are enforced and, and some repercussions for people who choose to, to use them in, in committing crime. The law-abiding people do not need more gun control in this country. So that's, and, that's, that's my... and that's start enforcing the border where these guns are coming in. Exactly. Like, like stop making laws that you're not going to enforce. Um, and then the ugly, I think, is, uh, well, it sort of stems from the gun control issue, but I think what we're going to see, and you're starting to see it in the news, is we're heading for another ugly freaking election in the spring from the looks of it. Uh, Jagmeet Singh is already making, well, he, he actually said he was going to be, when he was going to be prime minister yesterday, I don't know if yeah, you caught that you. on the news, and, and the house started <laughs> laughing at that comment, so that, was, that was pretty interesting, but that to me says, you know, their, their marriage is uh, already heading for divorce, and uh, our good friend Justin is looking for any opportunity to get another four years out of it, and uh, so I, I think we're heading for another election, you know, less than two years after we did the last one. Well, you know, we could hope that uh, our Prime Minister takes a page out of his father's playbook, and over the holidays maybe goes for a walk during the global, <laughs> should we have That's one? right, the winter walk, yeah. Winter walk, and then maybe he might say, you know what, guys, I'm calling it a day and moving on, and... Uh, you know, there's a real possibility something like that might happen. And if that does, from my point of view, that would be the good in 2023. Yep. But we'll save that for a future episode. In terms of the good, the bad, the ugly, I would just say that it's been a um, interesting and challenging year in the security world. And the good is that it's sort of coming to an end and we could sort of 
refresh, restart, replan, reinvigorate for 2023. But I'm going to do a little bit differently uh, this episode, Luke, is uh, good, bad, and ugly. I'm going to, um, synonymous with ugly, I'm going to say silly. <laughs> and my silly of the week is the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, and his trading cards. When I heard that he was selling or marketing trading cards, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. I <laughs> thought you know, one of the uh, alternate media just doing having some fun at the end of the year. The guy actually put out trading cards. And what's even more bizarre, it sold out the first yeah. day. I was yeah. on his website today doing a little bit of research for this episode. I don't buy Trump trading cards. And they were gone. They were sold out. How much you had mentioned to me. How much did they make? Four and a half million. <laughs> talk, you, you know, talk about the integrity of the office. Talk about the image. I mean, this is the president of the United States. It could be the prime minister of Canada. Yeah. But it, it, this person is representing hundreds of millions of people, the strongest power in the world. And he's selling cards dressed up like Superman. The world has the country. The world has a lot of challenges ahead of ourselves because sort of segueing into 2022 in review is this is just an example the people have stopped thinking that yeah. we are so polarized okay the fact that this guy with this tactic wasn't laughed off the media cycle the guy is like uh, 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 John Gotti the Teflon Don he keeps doing these things that would kill anyone else and he 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 lists for another day Actually, now that I think of it, he's almost like our prime minister with all the yeah. scandals he was involved with. And each one, you would have thought, was a death blow. And he comes back stronger and stronger and stronger. <laughs> so that's my silly. <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna register for the next batch of releases because I'm going to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it probably it, it truly will be a collectible. I, I, yeah. I guess the guy is a mad genius, as he claims, I suppose. But the point is, you know, whether this is a fantastic marketing uh, uh, play or not, you're, you, you're a former president of the United States. You want to lead the free world in 2024 again. You do not do these things. You know, it's almost like watching the Harry and Meghan uh, thing on Netflix right now. And one of the things, you know, I have a lot of sympathy for them, but I also have some understanding for the firm or the system or whatever they call it. The thing is, when you're the king of England, okay, you can't go out with the boys drinking at a at, at a topless joint. Like there's certain things you just can't do. And I think you're the president of the U.S. I mean, he goes out to topless joints. He says crude things. I mean, I I don't, you know, I, I'm not the moral police, but you really would think your leaders that are representing you would be sort of above that. So, anyways, that's my my rant. I have you heard of Prince Andrew and some of those allegations? <laughs> no, I know, but uh, no, I, I agree. I, 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 and I'm not a supporter of that. I'm just, and that's exactly to my point, though. They do that and he got fired. You, you know, there's a price to pay. It just seems that the, the president or the former president, and perhaps some cases our prime minister, don't have, end up paying the price. And in fairness to our prime minister, I'm not, caring, uh, not comparing him to Prince Andrew at all. But it's just amazing that people get away with silly things. Listen, I'm not the president of the U.S. I'm the president of nothing. I'm not even the president of my home. If I pull the type of stuff that these guys did when I was employed for a big corporation, how do you think that would have turned out for me? Yeah, well, I think there's. Uh, well, I think we're gonna get we're gonna get into the entitlement discussion. Yeah. After, but do you have any other things that you have a couple more points on the good or the bad, or are you done? Oh. No, I'm done with good and bad. I just want to segue into 2022 and review. And, and, and if I could start, I'm going to talk about the Trump thing and one of the things and the cards and segue. The cards are an example of people not thinking anymore. One of the things we saw in 2022 is that people are so polarized, okay? They make decisions based on a soundbite or based on a hero and not with uh, critical thinking like we used to do. Uh, people don't trust the news sources anymore. So they're going to alternate news sources. Yeah. And that's okay, because you should go to alternate news sources, but you should look at it critically. You should look, what is the motive? You know, how was this information gathered? And one of the things in 2022, and I'm fear, fearing this will be a trend into 2023 and beyond, is people just aren't thinking, and they feel entitled, and they feel it's okay to do whatever to support their cause. 
And that sort of translates from a protection point of view, from a security point of view, we in the security industry had to deal with it. If we look at guards, for example, protecting assets, people now think that they can do all sorts of things. They can take pictures of things uh, that, you know, maybe are, would look rather suspicious or problematic. Uh, they can have a protest or trespass because their cause is important and it doesn't matter what the rules are. It's a real challenge we faced in 2022 coming out of COVID and it ain't going to change. No, I, I agree. And, and, I look at, um, I mean, unlike you, I have still have, well, you do have a daughter, but she's off to, to, to university. My boys are all at home. So I get to see what these younger generations are watching. And all I see is a bunch of spoiled, entitled, ignorant, arrogant people, especially on TikTok, doing the most crass things and being rewarded for it. And that's the problem. Like, again, you go back to the law and not being... Um, corrective or, or punishing enough on those who break the law. It's the same thing with social media. The more outlandish you are, the more you get rewarded. And the more outlandish it gets, the farther away from reality we're getting. We've lost perspective. You talk about entitlement. How many times have you gone into a, a restaurant in the last year and, and you see behavior of people, the way they treat waiters? Like that to me is one of my biggest turnoffs to watch some guy who thinks he's, you know, he's mm -hmm. got money, so that makes him special. And he treats people like garbage. And we used to see that once in a while, but now you see that from like almost everybody doing that. Like it's okay to do that. So I don't know where, where we went off the rails and I don't know how we're going to get back, but I think it's going to get a lot worse in 2023 before it starts to come back the other way. Because right now, you know, like a guy like Donald Trump puts out these cards and people reward him. Like I said, four and a half million bucks in, in under a day. So why I'll go out there and I'll be a bigger jerk, right? I'll do something even more outlandish. There's, you know, the, the moral uh, uh, fibers that sort of kept communities together and, and kept countries together. You know, you were Canadians collectively. We may have had disagreements, but we we're all Canadians or we're all Americans or we're all Brits or Irishmen or Italians. That seems to be throughout the Western world. Those pillars are crumbling. You know, after two full years of COVID uh, dominating the global risk cycle, okay, Canadian organizations in 2022 finally started to see the light of day. Things started getting back uh, uh, to, to a quasi sense of normal. Uh, people got their jobs back, okay? People started working again. Um, people started buying. And that probably put us into the mess we are with the economy right now, but they were buying a lot. And supply chain issues were a problem. But with all these new positive moves that started in the earlier part of 2022, to your point, we're now, right now, uh, I, I think the silver line, the silver lining, is starting to tarnish, and there's a shadow cast over the progress we've made. And I think it's this sense of entitlement, the sense of lack of critical critical thinking, and a sense of, of focus. You know, a goal, a common goal that we all could uh, subscribe, is uh, a challenge uh, that's going to uh, continue in 2023. And again, when I think of uh, people delivering frontline security services, when I think of who our customers are, my customers are, in respect to building operators, shopping mall operators, okay, people dealing with the public, the public in many instances are out of control. And yeah. that is, you know, and this is, and, and what makes this even more problematic uh, from a security risk management point of view, the challenge faced by security personnel, be them corporate security personnel or frontline security guards, is greater than it's ever been. It's getting more complicated and dynamic. And certainly when it comes to security guards, we're having trouble getting anyone to work in security, let alone qualified people. We're not training people properly to deal with the new risks and threats that we're faced. The training regiments in many respects are five, 10 years in the past, and we're not paying people a living wage. Yeah. You know, I, I, I did, uh, uh, went on the government of Canada, uh, site and looked at the average salaries paid in the Toronto region, and Toronto being one of the highest markets in the country. But a general office worker in the Toronto region, just a general worker, has a salary ranging from $16 an hour on the low side to 32 on the high side. And this is a general worker. He's not dealing with angry people. He or she's not dealing with protecting critical infrastructure, okay? So in the Toronto region, like I see from 16, excuse me, I said 16 to 32, that's Ontario. Toronto is 16 to 35. 
okay, the average in Canada is 15 to 32. What are security guards making in this uh, uh, city? Just if above that. If we're lucky, they're making $18, $19 yeah. an hour, okay? And they're $18, $19 an hour dealing with incredible challenges and threats. I looked at, uh, also on the government site, looked at uh, people who work in mailrooms, okay? In the Toronto region, you work in a mailroom, you make $19 an hour up to $37.50. Okay, this is 2022 numbers. So I guess my question is, how many times in the mailroom are they dealing with people engaged in hate speak or threatening to kill them or threatening to blow up the facility or having heart attacks in front of them? You know, I'm not saying, you know, all jobs are important, but when you look at what we're expecting our security folks to do and the people responsible for security programs, the companies that are dealing with the public, when we look at what we expect them to do, that was a problem in 2022 finding people and paying them properly. And that's going to continue to be a problem in 2023. Yeah. And uh, when you look at the other factors, I think it was the other day I heard on the news that a one bedroom apartment in Toronto is 2,600 bucks a month, just to rent. So you got to make, what's that? 20, almost $30,000 goes to just shelter uh, to live in the, in the city. Um, and so, you know, guards cannot afford to live in the downtown core. So they have to travel. And then you start talking about transit, and that's another issue that's affecting the security guard uh, industry. Because now, if you don't have uh, transit on site, they'll just say, "I'm not coming in. I won't. Mm -hmm. I won't work there." Try and staff a site that has no no transit stop out front. Like, and and, and then sure, they need the transit because they can't afford a goddamn car. And if they bought a car, they're barely able to afford that car. You got to bring them downtown where they're paying thirty, forty dollars a day to park. The first two, three hours of their workday is just to pay parking and getting to work. So how the business owner or company can think that that's feasible in this in this economy is just mind blowing. They've treated and, and you know you've had some of these experiences too, where Mr. CEO comes down the down the stairs, walks through the lobby, and God forbid that guard does something that he's been instructed to do by the property management team, um, and then gets basically crapped on by that by that executive, and lo and behold, who loses their job? That poor guard. It's not, it's not the, the executive that gets held accountable because God forbid that they're wrong, okay? So that stuff goes on all the time. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's another indication of entitlement. You know, that entitlement thing uh, strikes a chord with me. And I was talking to a client earlier this week, which uh, was managing a program where his guards were getting abused on a regular basis yeah. by uh, the tenants or the, the, the members of the public that uh, they come into contact with. And I told this uh, client... Uh, that uh, when I was uh, running a large security program, national security program, I had uh, certain, in the commercial real estate uh, environment, so these were class A office towers. The tenants often were bankers and lawyers and, and very high profile people, some of whom very entitled. And I remember often there were a couple of tenants that would on a regular basis come down to the property management officer, the security director's office, and complain about a security officer and saying, Charlie did ABCD the other day. I want Charlie fired. Yeah. And that really would anger me. And the approach I would take, and I explained this to the client that they should be taking is, I went to the uh, tenant and I says, I understand you're angry. And I understand you don't understand or you're not happy with the way you were treated by security. But let's, let me make one thing very clear for you. That guard that you want fired was doing what we told him to do. So let's sort of reset for a second. Your anger, I accept and I acknowledge, okay? Maybe it was inappropriate, I accept and I acknowledge. But your anger is directed at the wrong person. It should be directed at me or the organization that told that guard to do it. Yeah. But more often than not, these guards that are not paid well, that aren't respected well, either by the people they're dealing with or even sometimes their own employers or the people they're working for, uh, aren't getting the training in... Um, Looking at a CT, I'm trying to multitask here. I was looking at a CTV report that was published in November of this year, and it talked about living wages across Ontario. So we're going to start off with it's not uncommon to see security guards. And again, we're talking about guards now. We're not talking about corporate security professionals that work in the banks and the big corporations, but the guards. It's not uncommon to find guards making 18, 17 dollars an hour 
yeah. $80 an hour. I mean, I think they should be making close to 30, but that's just me. And then 19 is sort of maybe an average and 2021 20, would be a lot. Okay. So with that in mind, the living wage. Okay. So if we've got an average of about 1850 in uh, Toronto, based on what I've seen, the living wage in Gray Bruce is $20, $21 an hour. It's 19 in Dufferin, Wellington. It's 1980 in South uh, East region, which includes uh, the Niagara region, okay? 1905 in Hamilton, 1960 for Ottawa, and it is $24 for Toronto. That's living wage. So this challenge of uh, staffing uh, the positions, okay, that started, in 20, started with COVID, continues in 2022, and actually is getting worse in 2022. Yeah. And the secure at the same time, security risks and threats are going up, is going to continue into 2023. I mean, I'll give you a real life example. I'm representing a couple of clients right now on uh, some security RFP work, and they've got some real challenging security environments to try to uh, staff for, but they're unable, they're unable to uh, fund the money they need to get the type of guards they need based on the type of raises and adjustments that have to occur, even if they do cost of living. And there's a simple reason for that. Guards have been underpaid for so long that right now to say, okay, cost of living is three or 4%, we'll give them 4%. That's great. But the thing is they were six years behind to start yeah. with. That only works if we're able to raise the bar to where it should be and then keep it from there. And so my fear for 2023, and I'm seeing it as I'm trying to procure guards for, for clients, it's going to be more and more difficult to get the quality of guards that uh, you need. And it's not because the guard companies are the problem. The market is the problem. And the uh, risk environment is very, very challenging. And clients are, are unwilling or unable to, and guard companies are unwilling or unable to, to pay the guards, to train the guards the way they need to be trained to deal with the future. So there's a disconnect. You've got risk environment over here, and you've got your reaction over here. Talk about technology, cameras, and access control. Yeah. That stuff is changing on a regular basis. Cyber threats in 2023 continue to be the number one security concern. Those systems are not being upgraded fast enough. So again, you've got a threat environment here, manpower issues here, technology issues here. You've got this gap that needs to be addressed, and I don't think it's going to be addressed soon enough. No, it's not, because I think one of the reasons why you've got your consulting agency is that that there's companies do not have the, the expertise, um, and, and I don't think there's much of it out there, that is capable of intertwining those different elements together in a cohesive security program. They typically look at guards as a service. They look at CCTV as a service. They look at access control as a service. And everything, has, it's their own vector. Nothing's connected. Uh, and that's a problem because going forward, everything's integrated. You should have been into, to your point, th these systems, the operations should have been integrated five, six years ago. And yet we still struggle. Most guards don't understand how to operate those systems. And that should be an automatic. Like that should be a mandatory prerequisite to becoming a guard. You should know how to operate an access control system. You should know how to view video, basically. Like you don't have to cut and all that, but you should be able to at least know, understand what video does and how to access it. So I think that's a big gap that isn't being addressed in an effective way. There's only a couple of, you know, you know, agencies like yourself out there trying to make a way into that, into that space. But I don't think most of the clients really understand the need for that integration. So I think that that, to your point, is a big opportunity and a big gap in security going forward that needs to be closed. The other piece just to switch gears a little and, and, and change the discussion is we talked about the media earlier. And I think that we shouldn't just say, you know, fake news and that and end it there because security relies on timely, accurate information to be able to make decisions. And because we can't find that anymore, or it's becoming more difficult to find, I think that's going to be a real challenge going forward as well. Not just for people who are out there just looking for everyday news, but even for security practitioners, what is the real intel out there? And, you know, do you have the right sources? Because, you know, I I'm, I'm, I watch and read news all the time like you do, but I can tell you, like, and I, we've had these discussions where, to me, the Canadian media is nothing but junk mail right now. The CBC, CTV, Global News, I don't care what, what agency you want to pick. It's like popcorn news, okay? They give you the headline, and that's the extent of it, and they give you the headline that they want, okay? And they're trying to influence people's thought process and all this kind of stuff. It's up to the everyday citizen and the security person to dig a little deeper to find out what's going on out there. And that's not being done. Most people read the headline 
and that they'll go about their day and that'll be the end of it. And that's probably part of the reason why we have such an extreme, you know, um, gap right. between yeah. left and right or whatever you want to call it. Right. But I think that's a real opportunity because without people being more um, uh, discriminating, they, discriminating and taking ownership of that, we're just falling into that, into their trap. They're setting up their discussion, their narrative. And I, you know, and I'm, I guess it's sounding a little bit like conspiratorial, but that's what it is. But I'm going to take your head off now because I was agreeing <laughs> with you until you said conspir conspir the, cons the C word, the conspiratorial yep. word. Okay, it, There's no conspiracy. People are just stupid. We're not being discriminating. We're not peeling back the onion. You know, when I was growing up, there were just before cable TV in the Stone Age, there were just like three or four or five networks or CB, CBC, CTV, CBS, ABC, NBC. That yeah. was it for the cable news and all that nonsense. And who knows? Quite honestly, they were all saying the same thing. And I'm not saying that, you know, we were probably zombies back then and we didn't know any better. Nowadays, we have all sorts of opportunities to look at news from all sorts of different sources. And I think that's healthy. But what's not healthy is that people are deciding to look at their news, get their news from just one source. And they're not peeling back the layers of the onion. And they're accepting face value what is said. What yeah. I try to do, so that's not a, conspir a conspiracy. What that well, is, what? is people taking advantage of the fact that we're letting our guards down because the minute we, the public, decide that we're going to look at multiple sources of news before we make a decision, we're going to be better off. We're doing this to ourselves. No one is doing I agree. It, it's, it's the reader's problem, but they know that. So they are willingly and intentionally doing that. There's no more, you know, maybe Walter Cronkite and, and, you know, Peter Robertson, maybe they, maybe they were feeding us a bunch of bull, right? And we didn't have the capability to call them out on it. But today's media, the main media, they know that people are like that, and that makes them more culpable because they intentionally lead you down that road. When you're talking about indigenous rights and social housing, when people are really concerned about their goddamn jobs and the economy, and you don't even talk about it in a, in a pr pr uh, prime ministerial debate, that to me is intentional. And they but, should be responsible for that. Don't ask but, me to believe you. But they are responsible. We keep folding them back in. That's the problem. <laughs> We, you know, like if you were in Russia or North Korea, I would agree, but we have options available to us that we're not using. So, you know, I, we're, the fact that we're lazy, I can't tell you how many people I've talked, well, uh, people my son's age, you know, that I talk to that uh, will badmouth, let's say the liberal government, they don't like Trudeau. Okay. And then I asked them, you know, I sort of agree with your point. And I said, just out of curiosity, who did you vote for last election? Oh, I didn't vote. That's the problem. People yep. do not take ownership. And again, you know, we sound like political pundits now, and I certainly am not one. But the point is, all this confusion out there just makes the protection world more complicated. Just look at what's happening in policing. I just read uh, uh, Michael Fanone. He was that D.C. police officer that wrote a book involved in the January, 20, uh, January 6th uh, insurrection in the capital in, in the United States. And he was saying it was just amazing. The people he dealt with that day, they tried, he had a heart attack. He was zapped with a taser. He was assaulted. He was just completely destroyed. But he said the people he was dealing with that day just were so focused on their version of events and incapable of looking at any other perspective. He was called uh, a, a fascist. He, he was told by them that they are there to protect democracy in America, and he and the other police officers were just a bunch of goons. That's the world we live in. And yeah. there's no, there are people taking advantage of that. Listen, give you an example, and you'll realize I was right, you were wrong in a moment. <laughs> you ever get the phone call from the guy that says he's calling from the duck cleaning company? You ever yeah, get that phone call? Yeah, I think everyone does. Uh, have you signed up? How did you like the work they did? You didn't right. sign up because you realize because you're discre you you have a discriminating mind. I hate to say that you're a relatively intelligent guy, and you realize this was a scam. You realize that because you've read, you know about this stuff. The fact is that the problems that are happening now, I believe, are because people are letting it because people are either too polarized, polarized, not working together, and unwilling to think. That's not. I a don't. I don't disagree with that, but my point is that what is your point, Luke? The guy who's selling you the duck thing is first of all a businessman, or he's a criminal because there's those scammers out there to do the same shit. They're out there to get your money. 
When the government's doing it, they have no right to do that. They should be serving the public. They should be telling us and being honest with us. That's the difference. We are well, their we are their boss, and they no are difference. outwardly lying to us. There's no difference. There's no difference. Just like with the duct cleaning guy, you decided no, don't call me again. Well, when the government is not representing your interests, vote them out. Do you know uh, join a political party? That's, yeah, okay. No, but no, 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 the system's I, become so friggin' so polarized. Well, it doesn't. Well, well, it's not working the way you you're you're alleging it works. It's not no, that easy. You know that. Well, well, hold it. I, I'm assuming you didn't vote for the prime minister. Or I didn't. Okay, I have voted liberal in the past, but I'm sort of a right of center type guy, center right of center type guy. I think everyone's really polarized right now. You probably didn't vote for that guy. You probably voted for another party. NDP? I'm not really sure. I, wrote, I voted NDP once. Yeah. I made that mistake. Yeah. No, okay. okay. You're, you're, like, and that goes to my point. There's no options there. You're stuck no, within no, that no. framework. No, but but you're, you, you, what you do, like me, I'm, I'm an, uh, not an opportunist. I look at the situation and one day it might be conservative, might be liberal, it could be NDP. I really don't know type thing. But you make a discriminating decision. How many people have uh, disagreed with you and voted for the other guy? We got to sit down over a beer. We got to talk to people. We got to debate without, you know, uh, burning down the parliament buildings or the capital in the U.S. And we've got to uh, uh, put our point of view. I really respect you. I really like you. I've known you a long time. Even though you're so wrong on so many things, we can sit down and talk about it, and then we'll go for a beer afterwards. That's what's missing. And again, to bring it back to 2023, I don't think see things getting any easier. No, I don't. But you're, you're sitting down and talk about it with who? They don't talk. Th that's my point. The government itself doesn't no, no, sit down and talk no, with people. No, not with the government. With the guy that voted for the government, and get him, uh, talk to him, get him oh to see God. your You're words. living in. I, you're. Li what are you smoking over there? Because I want some of that. What world are you no, living no, in? No, but but that's what a democracy <laughs> is. That's the problem. You are part of the problem. Okay, <laughs> our listeners, our fifty thousand listeners, vote one on the common page if you agree with Luke. Vote two. Oh. Do if you agree with me. Okay, let's get that out of the way because I'm just gonna snap. I think the other big one that's on the radar. Well, it's on the radar. It's there. I think the war in, uh, Ukraine. in Ukraine obviously is a big problem. I think that there's a real risk, a, like a serious step forward in terms of, of war. Whether it's a global war, I hope not. I would hope to God that that's wrong. But I see more conflict on a much grander scale probably between, uh, I mean, you're looking at India and China now, India, Pakistan, uh, China and uh, Russia, uh, you know, the Southeast Asian area. Like everywhere you look, there's potential powder kegs. I don't see that getting any better. In fact, it's probably going to blow somewhere. I just don't know where it's going to be. Well, yeah, I, I agree. And I think uh, my closing comments, I guess, on, on the outlook for 2023, I think it's really incumbent on security leaders, program leaders, okay, uh, to really look at what's happening globally and assess what that means to their security operations and their companies. A good friend of ours, a former, he's retired Toronto police uh, intelligence guy. He was involved in counterterrorism for many, many years. And he had mentioned to me many times that what he and his team would do is they'd have the TV on and if something happened in India or in France or in Ukraine, it's just a matter of time that it's going to occur here in Toronto, sometimes days. So what they do is they're proactive, uh, they're scanning the threat environment and proactively being prepared to deal with it should it come to Toronto. I think that's what uh, uh, the lesson is of 2022 in the last couple of years. I think security, we can't get caught off guard anymore. We got caught off guard with COVID. We weren't prepared. We got caught off guard with our emergency stockpiles. We weren't prepared. We got caught off guard with the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia. Uh, it was inevitable. We saw that happening since the first time Crimea occurred. We knew they were going back. Putin said he was gonna do it. So I think security leaders have to look at their operations, have to look at what's happening around the world and make an assessment, a continuous assessment. What does that mean to the, uh, the security posture of the organizations I'm protecting? And I think we have to dynamically adjust in 2023, perhaps more than we've had to do in the past. And that that really falls on the security leadership. I wouldn't expect the guards to oh, of course. be in tune with all that, but the leadership should also be giving the guards the tools to be able to manage that risk once it realizes itself. So you go back to yeah. bringing it to the to security program. 
we've both implemented, uh, you know, behavior recognition training in our former lives. Uh, that kind of stuff should be automatically given to the guards so that empowers them to be able to detect suspicious behavior. You know, couple the, the, the behavior recognition training and stuff like that with the ideological things that are going on in the world. They have to be able to tie those two together. I'm not asking them to be a political science major, but they should be able to know that, hey, you know, terrorist organization A is ramping up their activity and you know we may be, we may see some of that activity outside our building, or we may see some of our critical infrastructure targeted. I don't I don't believe that we're prepared. I think we're less prepared today than we were five years ago. It's just like 9/11 or the uh, the Lockerbie bombing. You know, right after those two three years, yeah, everyone's hell bent on making everything secure. But here we are, ten years out now from 9/11, twelve years out. And we're just back to the to the same old, you know, ah, whatever. Don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. It costs too much. We can't afford it. It's inconvenient. Like all those bullshit arguments are back on the table. And if you go downtown, like I can only speak to Toronto. That's where I've been in the last couple of years. You just don't see the uh, the intel sharing that was once there. Like when's the last time CSIS had a meeting and brought everybody to the table? Maybe they're having them and we're not aware of it but I haven't heard of them. And they used to be regular, right? We used to go once a year for those briefings. Yeah, yeah but I think also a lot of it happened in the past because we in the private sector pushed that. And I just yeah. think we're going through a cycle right now where there's a generation of leaders that have taken over, but maybe are focusing on other types of things. But you're right, you know, uh, history repeats itself. And it's just a shame that we never learn the lesson of history. We, we just keep making the same, same mistakes. One more thing I want to say in being prepared for 2023, I think... Security has to have a new set of tricks in their arsenal. And I think guards have to be, uh, guards and frontline security people have to be uh, aware of uh, cultural sensitivities. They have to understand the people that they're dealing with and interacting with. You know, the days of just getting a guy that needed a job and have muscles and make him a guard doesn't work anymore. You know, the police are learning that the hard way. And we, we, should, we shouldn't wait till we get hit in the, in the top of the head. There's a lot of anger out there. Toronto is a melting pot. People are coming with different cultural sensitivities. And I think guards have to be, as part of their training, just be aware of the communities that they're serving so that they know what the uh, points of concern are. So I think 2023 is exciting, but I think there's a lot of work that still has to be done. And I hope that uh, we as an industry and a leadership uh, cadre are up to it. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree that the guard of tomorrow, going back to 2023, is not going to be your muscle head guard. But by the same token, the other trend that I do not like is that trend of, well, we're just ambassadors, uh, observe and report. Hey, good morning. But anything more, more than that, we're not going to do anything about it because I think, you know, we've talked about plenty of times. You're liable for what happens to a certain level. If your guards are in, they're guards by definition. They're they're guards. They're supposed to be able to engage and keep people safe. So if the the definition of guard for your business is basically saying good morning to people, and when sh you know shit hits the fan, for lack of a better word, they just turn the other way because that's effectively what you're asking them to do. Then you're potentially setting yourself up some for some exposure on the liability side. So I think the guard of tomorrow. Yeah, we have to be heavily reliant on customer service. That's absolutely the future. I'm not saying they need to be out there with banging heads. They have to be able to say good morning. They have to be able to engage people and welcome them into that property because that's what they're there for. They're an ambassador of the property. But that also means you're there to secure the property and keep people safe. And that might mean you might have to get your hands dirty once in a while. doesn't mean that you're going to grab people. And we are talking about the vast minority of, of incidents, but they have to have the competency to do it. And most guards don't. Well, and it goes back to what I said earlier. Had you been listening, you wouldn't have just wasted <laughs> the last few minutes with the ambassador piece. But it's really a matter of uh, uh, leadership assessing a threat environment. And if your assessment is based on the threat environment faced by your organization that's saying, good morning, here's your coffee. If that's what your security posture needs to be, God bless you. Uh, I'd like to understand how you came to that conclusion. But this ambassador piece really drives me crazy because they're the ambassador of the property or the organization. They're saying good morning, all this stuff. Everyone that works in the organization says good morning. Everyone that's part of that organization is an ambassador. So I don't know why we keep nailing that with security people. The reason we, I have a theory, the reason they do it is because most people that run security programs 
especially the civilian people that you know the the that run they don't know what security is they know we need it but we don't want them to make too much noise we yeah. don't want them to do their job so just say good morning that so again if that's the result of your threat risk assessment and that's the posture you need to keep you safe then you've done your job but i would challenge you and i might even say bullshit when i see that i don't think you've done the proper tra well, i think we've done a terrible job of calling bullshit because when you talk to them and you know we're both on the other side of the house now we used to be clients uh, now we deal with clients and when they tell you um you know stabbings are up mental illness is up uh, drug overdoses are up the guards are being assaulted uh, you hear regularly now and then you follow that up with but i just want them in suits yeah. you got to think you know what's going on in your head like yeah. you're admitting that there's a risk there but you don't want to give them the hard armor or whatever you know to, to to mitigate their their own safety when they're dealing with those things so to me they're diametrically opposed like you can't have both you got to acknowledge that there's a risk there and give them the tools to take care of it but i'll tell you why they not uh, they don't want to give them the tools because they don't have trust in the quality yeah. of the guards they've recruited for 17 dollars an hour that they're able to do it and therein lies the problem it's a conundrum type thing okay you've got a need over here but you got a guard and and i'm not disparaging the guard but we've hired the wrong person or we haven't supported or trained the person. Yeah. We've got to get these two aligned and they're not. Anyways, I think we're running out of time. We are. So with that, I'm going to say to our uh, vast audience of listeners that uh, we're excited about 2023. I think after this episode, I should become the angry man because you just way too <laughs> laid back. I'm much more passionate than you are right now. Um, but for those, uh, just so everyone knows, we are doing a, a, a bigger, we're, we're making an effort to have um, guest speakers every other week. Uh, so on the first, it'll just be me and Brian boring you. And then uh, on the 15th, we're going to bring in, we're going to try and bring in guests. And our next guest is going to be James Acevedo. Um, for those of you who don't know James, he's a drone specialist. So that's what he does. Um, so we're looking forward to having a discussion with him. We're going to talk about, you know, some of the legislation around how those operate. And more importantly, how it's changed the game for uh, for businesses, and depending on obviously the kind of business you're running, there's all kinds of cool uses for drones that uh, I, I think many of you will be surprised to hear. So we're looking forward to that on the 15th. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to say Happy New Year to everyone. All the best in 2023. Uh, although what we've talked about isn't exactly positive, but hey, at least uh, we can hope for the best. And uh, maybe some of this stuff won't come to fruition, and it'll be a great year. And that's uh, that's what we the best we can hope for, right? Yeah, same thing. James, by the way, is a really interesting guy, so I'm really looking forward to talking to him uh, on our next session. Everyone have a safe and happy holiday. Uh, think of your families and enjoy each other. That concludes this podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening and will join us in a couple of weeks for our latest episode. Please remember to like and follow us on our sponsor's webpage, brianclayman.com, where you can leave us your comments and suggest topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. Until next time, thanks for listening and don't forget to protect your assets.